Hi. So let us now wind up the first week's lectures with a brief review session. So let us take a let us take stock of what we have done so far in the last few lectures. We have reviewed matrices, operations with matrices, addition of matrices. Two matrices can be added if they have the same size. Multiplication by scalars. Product of matrices. If A is a m cross n matrix and B is a n cross k matrix, then A B is a m cross k matrix. And first we multiplied a row vector by a column vector, and then we then what are the i j th row of A B? Take the i th row of A and the j th column of B, multiply them, and you get the i j th. Entry of the product matrix A B, and then we saw that matrix multiplication is associative, and then ma matrix multiplication distributes over matrix addition. That is, A of B plus C is A B plus A C. Then there is a notion of transpose of a matrix. The rows become columns, and the columns become rows. The first row becomes the first column, the second row becomes the second column, and so on. So if A is m cross n matrix. Then A transposes a n cross m matrix. That's a notion of transpose. What is the relation between transpose and products? A B transpose is B transpose A transpose. Also, if I take the transpose twice, A transpose transpose is A. And then square matrix, a matrix which is which is its own transpose is called a square. Excuse me, I made a mistake. A matrix is a square matrix. If m and n are equal, and a matrix which is its own transpose is called a symmetric matrix. Yeah, a matrix which is its own transpose is called a symmetric matrix. A matrix in which the number of rows and number of columns are the same is called a square matrix. The identity matrix is a square matrix with the property that it has ones down the main diagonal and off diagonal entries are. Zeros. Okay, so these are all the standard things that you probably know from your twelfth standard courses. If A and B are symmetric matrices, and if A B equal to B A, then A B is symmetric. Let us try to understand why this is so. What is A B transpose? A B transposes. B transpose A transpose, but B transposes B and A transposes A. So A B transpose is B A, but B A is the same as A B, no? So A B transpose is same as A B. So the product is also symmetric. A little exercise for you: What if A and B are skew symmetric? What are the skew symmetric matrices? A matrix is said to be skew symmetric if A transpose equals minus A. If A transpose equals minus A, then the matrix is called a skew symmetric matrix. If A B equal to B A, then what can you say? And if A and B are both skew symmetric, then what can you say about A B? Fill in the blanks. Little exercise for you. Then we discussed row operations on matrices. This is one of the most important topic in the first chapter. The entire course. Would hinge upon this fundamental idea of row operations. One can also think of column operations, but that is in advanced linear algebra courses. In this basic course, we shall not do any kind of column operations. We shall exclusively be in, involved in row operations. There are three types of row operations. What are the three types of row operations? Exchanging two rows, adding to a given row a multiple of another row. Multiplying a given row by a non-zero scalar. These are the three types of row operations, and there are some basic rules with matrix multiplication. That is the prop. The first rule is if I want to, if I want the jth column of a matrix, I simply compute a e j cap. What is e j cap? E j cap is a column. Vector e j cap is a column vector with one in the jth slot and zero elsewhere. If I want the kth row of a matrix, it is simply f k a, where f k is the row vector 
with one in the kth slot and zero elsewhere. These are the two very, very basic rules. And the third rule is that performing an elementary row operation on a matrix, performing an elementary row operation on a matrix is equivalent to, is the same as multiplying, pre-multiplying the matrix by the corresponding elementary matrix. So for example, if I want to switch the jth and the kth row, then you simply look at the corresponding elementary matrix. What is the corresponding elementary matrix? Start with the identity matrix and do the same row operation, namely switch the jth and the kth row. And you get pjk. So if, if, when you take pjk, so if you compute pjka, then the matrix op so obtained is identical with the matrix that you would obtain by switching the jth and the kth row in the original matrix. So performing a row operation on a matrix is the same as pre-multiplying the matrix by the corresponding elementary matrix. Then we discussed inverse of a square matrix, Gauss's method for calculating the inverse of a square matrix. The rule number four, the basic rule that we needed for this purpose is that if you have a matrix equation AB equal to CD, if you have a matrix equation AB equal to CD, then A and the C are called the prefactors. So performing the same elementary row operation, the same, the same elementary row operation on the prefactors, you get another equality which is equivalent to the original equality equation. So you keep, uh, so you use this basic rule number four in order to compute the inverse of a square matrix. This algorithm will also tell you whether the inverse exists or not. In case you, uh, in, in the, when you keep performing, when you keep performing row operations, if you happen to encounter a situation where one of the rows becomes zero, then that matrix cannot have an inverse. So these are the salient features of the first week's uh, material. And I think we'll close with this lecture 3B. And on Thursdays, we'll have a live interaction session. Please listen to these videos, do the problems, and be ready with your questions for the live interaction session on Thursdays. Thank you very much. We'll stop recording here.